All right, Talking Power Podcast, episode 158. I'm here with co-host Todd Brinkworth. I'm Nick DiCiumbre. We've got some really special guests here with us on the podcast tonight. I'm joined by Phil and Dan from Aussie Garage TV. Guys, there thanks for coming along. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. It's great to have you guys here. We caught up at the Northern Steel Show. Yes. Yep. We, we first met you there. I've been following you for a little while, and then I saw the interview you did with Alison and Pete of yep. Northern Steel. I thought that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good incentive. I like, I like what you do. And I started watching more of your content, and you know what came back to me? And I don't know, I, you said you're from Canberra. I don't know how long you've been in Western Australia for yourself then, but it brought back, I don't know, you probably remember, TV show, this was in the 90s, called Cruising. It was the late 90s, early yes. 2000s, Cruising on Channel 31. Murray Reynolds was his name. I don't know if you remember Murray. I, I remember that kind of show, but yeah, I don't yeah. know much about it, but I remember a little bit about it. Yeah, he, he did a magnificent job, Murray. I really liked Murray. I don't know where he is these days. Hello, Murray, if he's listening. Yeah. I hope you're going well. Great West Australian. And your show reminded me of of his TV show. So talk us through that. It's it's a show about you you, you talk to what's well, probably best you you tell us. Wow. Do you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> well, um, when we first sort of got together and came up with the idea, we wanted to drag people's stories out about their cars. Yeah. So the cars are primarily the most important part, but the stories um, run in a very close second. So we wanted to get people's stories out of them more so than just have a look at their car. We wanted to know where they came from, whether there was a family connection with the cars or whether they had to drag it out of a creek and completely rebuild it, um, that sort of thing. So, yeah. 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 so that was our focus when we got started. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Obviously, there's a there's a WA aspect to you, to your show, um, and I I I feel that. And do you think that's something that's been that we've kind of missed in the last probably last few years? Like, I mean, we sort of we talk. We, we, there's a lot of content out there, but I don't think there's many many guys doing what you guys do. No, we we do it kind of different from everyone else. We just don't go to just shows and just you know do the normal stuff film cars we mm. want to make sure that we get it out there we interview the people that are on you know at the scene yeah. and um, then we want to take it back to the house we get better response when we're at the house than what we actually do at the event yeah yeah and um, yeah WA is it, it has had a bit of a gap between the car scene and what's been out there because even what we have most of our viewers are even though we're WA, most of our viewers are in eastern states. Yep. And, yep. But yep. we're still trying to promote like WA and the car scene and make it bigger over here uh, because there's plenty of cars hiding around. And and even the other day we were down at the southwest and there was a guy that apparently he's got 50 Mustangs in his shed and we're trying to get hold of him so we can interview him. But they're just hidden away and people don't know about them. How hard is that part of the job? Like, A, you get a lead on someone, I know you've had a few. How, oh. how hard is that that part? The, the, like find the lead and go in the next step. Yeah, I think it's yeah. getting easier. It, a little bit easier. Um, yeah. yeah, we kind of um, kind of force our way in, or we or we tell yeah. them the job and the mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but some people don't want to talk to us, and that's yeah. fair enough too. Yeah. Um, yeah our, our first response to that is, well, dob in your mate. Who who will talk to us? And yeah. generally, we get someone. So, yeah. 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 Um, and the more people we speak to, the more leads we get from them. They say, oh, I've got a mate with this and that, and rah, rah, rah. so so we end up with um, you know leads leads just from people that we've interviewed. So yeah. 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 Well, we did one interview, and um, from that interview, I think we end up getting five or six new people to interview from that mm. and um and they've got very amazing cars as well and some of them are unique so i mean that that's part of the the gig i guess it is as well like you've got to build your brand as well people yeah. become trusted in aussie garage tv and then they buy into to what you guys are doing you're not just you know with respect not just like a you know, 13 or 16 year old kid or a 17 year old kid with a GoPro rolling around talking to people. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like we see that come and go so often, but I think, you know, you guys was, is more more legit, if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah, I, I really, I'm, I'm enjoying what you guys are do, doing. Like, tell me, you, you've sort of kicked off 
um, in February of 2022. In my view, it's been a quick climb for you guys. I think you've done really well in terms of subs and subscribers, that is, yeah. and, and the, the viewership. But tell us, did you think you'd get to that point so quickly in one year? We actually didn't think we'd get more than 50 people looking at us, and then no. that just went from there, didn't it? Yeah, that's it. We generally yeah. started just for our own interest and just to do a few things for the panel van club that we're in and that sort of thing, and it just yep. sort of grew from there. Yep. Um, yeah. We went with no expectations, which is a good way to go. Mm. And um, yep. so as things built, you know, we just um, yeah put more and more effort in, and away we went. Mm. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I can certainly see that. I mean, it was, yeah, a thousand, I mean, we, even our, our YouTube hasn't hit nowhere near a thousand. No. Well, we don't, we don't, probably don't push YouTube enough, but, um, yeah, I I, um, I think you've done a magnificent job in such a short period of time. Where do you see the entire social media um, movement in terms of the automotive scene? Like I said, we've seen a lot of guys come and go. Like, where do you see yourself in, I guess, in maybe a year or two, in five years' time? Well, hopefully in a bigger, better position than what we are now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, hopefully it will expand and there'll be more cars that will be out in the scene. Hopefully WA will have a bigger presence out on the um, Australian scene as a stage mm. overall. Um, because we have a lot of people that go to like the summer nats and stuff and they all come over here but we don't have a lot of great people from WA going over there and showcasing their cars either um, and we don't really have a big massive show um, apart from motivation over here mm. um, and we've got uh, Max Pinjaro with the, like the state titles and other things like that that happen but they're not big events like summer nats mm. and we don't have that quality whereas there's a lot of elite cars out there, but motivation is more for, I think more for burnouts and the skids and everything like that. Whereas the show car side of it is very small, where it used to be massive when motivation first started. And it was only, the burnouts were only a small portion. Mm. Um, and I would love to see that again. I would yeah. love to see that back. Yeah, yeah, okay, yep, yep. It's interesting. I, I I agree with you as well. I think I didn't go to motivation this year, to be honest. I I, um, I didn't go, but I think it's turned. It's morphed into something into something else. I mean, yeah. when Perth City Street Machine had it so many years ago, it was a yes, it was a burnout comp, but it was so many other things as well. It was like a yeah. really cool show. Even those early years at Birdswood as well. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I used to go to them all the time because like, I'm WA born. Yeah. So yeah, I used to go there all the, the time. The Baghdad Bullet doing burnout. Oh now, yeah. You think, look, can you think about like think back to that that and you think did you go to that? Yeah, and Victor. I all remember is Victor Bray hitting the stairs or the seats yeah. at Birdswood. Yeah. And I said to my mate, this will be the likely they ever had it, and it was the likely they ever had it, when yeah. we dealt with the sheets. But even, <laughs> even the Baghdad Bullet, you know, yeah. Frank uh, Gaffieri, I think his name is, uh, doing burnouts in the car park at the casino, you know, that's just... You, you, yeah. Yeah. That just wouldn't be heard of today. I'd be like, what? What do you mean? I yeah. tell my kids, I said, Frank, right, because that's still a car park to this day. Yeah. So Frank I was laying burnouts in a truck right here, and I was, no joke, like right there. <laughs> yep. Those days are gone, it's just... Yeah, that's it. I mean, when you used to go there, like, I saw a bloody uh, walking shawl mm. doing a burnout yeah. and ripping its whole ass end out, and I'm thinking, you wouldn't do that in a walking shawl now. Yes. Yeah. No point. Yeah. You know? There's just too much value there getting ripped apart. Yeah, yeah. Well, the scene has changed there as well. You Definitely. Know I mean? Those cars have sort of... Increased. Original cars, we were just talking about in the podcast earlier about, you know, originality. I think there's more value in keeping cars original now. It depends on what they are, of course, but then it is modifying them heavily. So, yeah, I think the scene's, I think the scene's changed a bit there. Yeah, it's definitely fluctuated a bit because, like, even with some of the total original cars now, um, you can still get decent money with it, even if it's not, mm. um, depending on the car. Um, if it's a Holden, definitely get more money if it's fully original. Mm. Um, but if it's anything else, yeah, you can get more money if it's custom. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the, my car is an XC Falcon for a uh, panel van, for example. My car is probably more worth more as a custom than what it would be as an original. That's, that's an interesting point yeah. you make there. Because I, I, I saw your car 
at the Northern still show, and you're, you're probably right. Yes, yeah, you're probably right. But yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. That's part of the art of what we do as well, isn't it? Weighing up what's worth modifying and what's not. Yeah. And everyone's right, aren't they? At the end yeah. of the day, there's no right or wrong answers, I guess. Definitely uh, not. Definitely. Yeah. It's personal opinion. Everyone's car is going to be different. It's going to be built for them. They yeah. build it for themselves and. Some people don't like it, but you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Well, mm. it's yeah. their ride, isn't it? Yeah, it's their it. choice, it's their, how they want to do it, and that's it, you respect it. If you like it or not, that, you respect it, because the guys put the energy and effort in, or the lady has, and um, they've actually done it very well 95% of the time. Sometimes mm. you look at it and go, okay, well, <laughs> that's a left field one, but okay, let's look at it. Yeah, 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 yeah no, agreed, agreed. Agreed. Um, when you're putting together a video or when you're shooting a video, how hard is it for you guys to come up with an edge or something a little bit different? Like, do you take that when you're recording or do you back at editing, you try, let's try something different out here? Uh, I think it's more we try to find those rare cars that people don't see or we look for what's so special about this car compared to so when we go to a show we look at a VL well, Commodore for example um, like we were at Northern Steel yeah. we looked at it and went well there's VL Commodores there all over the place but there was one VL Commodore that was an SV88 beautiful we car filmed that yeah and we filmed that and it was one of a hundred and one, one of 150 sorry and that thing was pristine never molested never been touched and that's the kind of stuff that like we really try to find. And we've done that a couple of times with interviews, haven't we? We've gone yeah, out we've and- found a few, a few gems in, in yeah, the Yeah, and then all of a sudden they've gone, oh, you, we've got this one back here, you know? And it was like, <laughs> okay. Like one of the biggest ones we had was uh, Joe. Um, we interviewed Joe about his cars and his family. Is, the, is he the one with the yellow, the 55 or the uh, 56, yeah, 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 yeah. and he's got well a, a the Cobra, XY and the, XY. the XA, yeah, all and that, the Valiant and the Cortina, yeah. and the <laughs> we met up with Cars and Coffee and said we just want to film you about the XC, and then next minute he goes, you know I've got about eight cars at home, and we went, we're coming over, and that was it. <laughs> We yeah. went there, we filmed it, we spent what, eight hours there one oh, we were day? there all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. filming? Yeah, it was a full yeah. day. Yeah. It was good. It's hard, isn't it? I mean, that's a lot of your time and, and his time as well. Yeah, what yeah. You, he's New York and both of you and, and his time into bringing, you know, his story and his car's story to, to the greater public. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't think people understand. Like, so it's eight hours of shooting. Or was it 16 to 24 hours of editing? Because that uh, I, I'm more times that. by three, don't you? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of definitely editing. a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, you may use, you may go through, like, you know, 10 hours of footage, but it may only be, you only put out a video that's probably 30 minutes long to, uh, and you may bring it out in three parts in three sessions. So maybe you get an hour and a half out of the whole lot that you shoot. And the rest of it, you it's you can't put it out there because it just you just don't have that view retention. Um, mm -hmm. You've got to get it right. You've got to get the length of it right. You've got to find out when to switch off and then move on to the next thing. And we found that YouTube and, and trying to find that niche area, it's it's very difficult to get it right every time because you think you got it right and then they change the goals and you start again and you go crap let's start again and do it this way and then it, we get it right sometimes sometimes we don't it's certainly not a a um, something that you can just say yep this is the formula and go because uh, it just yeah every, some videos will go really well some videos won't and you you won't know why. Uh, that's what I was about to ask because I've been doing this for a little while now and, and it's really so hard it's so hit and miss it really is but you know you read what YouTube tell you and they just try and say keep it under five minutes yeah but if you're gonna keep it under five minutes if you're gonna go over five minutes there's got to be you know engagement that whole the whole time I, I and I think you're hundred percent right I think that changed the goalposts as well, yeah, yeah, the algorithm changes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, we were at one stage we were getting uh, 
1,500 sh every short that we put out there. And then we just went down to 20 views per short. And for a long time there, it just dropped off the radar. We had nothing. And then now we're starting to claw back again. It's just the, the way the game rolls. Um, but there's a lot of technical stuff involved that, and for me and Dan, this is a big learning curve for us because we didn't actually start editing or pick up a camera until we actually, I think it was what, 2021, like uh, Pretty much, at a, yeah. Yeah, an event yep. that we were doing and we were just filming for the band club and we went, well, let's do it for ourselves. Never done it anywhere else in our lives. And we just taught ourselves editing, taught ourselves how we should do it and then watched a lot of tutorials and just try to get it right. And even now and again, we just pull our hair out and go, what the hell? <laughs> you know? it's, it's, it is. I'm glad it's not just me because I, I started thinking it was just me. No. So I'll give you a perfect example of that I haven't told you. So we did, I did identical videos. Yep. I dropped one on Facebook, same video, yep. same video. And I got like literally like, I, it was no likes at all. <laughs> yeah. No likes at all. And I think it was like, I don't know, 20 views. Same video I put on YouTube, but I changed the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. I put this big, I say all these videos now with these big stupid arrows. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, like, so I put, I said, you know what, just for a laugh, <laughs> I'm gonna put a stupid arrow there pointing at the car, and I use that bangers. Do you use bangers as your font? Apparently uh, bangers yeah. is the font to use for YouTube. It's called- Yeah, I'm learning, so yeah, you're, you're the Apparently, <laughs> I mean, I, so I use bangers. Now that video, got 400 views over at YouTube, exactly the same video. Yeah. I know that's nothing to write home about, 400 views is nothing, but that was completely organic. Both videos were, one was on Facebook, one was on YouTube, just had yeah. different thumbnails. Yeah. That's all it takes, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, well, we don't really know what it takes. Well, <laughs> well sometimes, sometimes- We're still figuring yeah, it out. Sometimes so it's, 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 yeah. the title, it's the thumbnail, it's it, it's everything that's, it all comes together mm. and you have to get it that perfect package to make it right. Yeah. And sometimes it's just sheer luck. Like yep. one of the best videos we've done was on one of our band members that unfortunately he's been caught fire. And we did that. And that was just us showing what happened then running through it and then everyone in the band club helping out and that just went nuts we we got yeah. 21,000 views out of that oh, one. Oh wow and but we haven't had that ever again but I don't I think it's because people were people saw a van on kept fire the, yeah they yeah. kept debating <laughs> yeah, with the van on fire on yeah. and because we got yeah. the footage of that yeah. and and but that's well, everyone likes, yeah. a, likes a bit of a hard luck story too, you know. Yeah. I mean? And we, we interviewed Nick about it, and he sort of had his words on the situation. So, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, is that Nick Kokonos? Yeah. 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 He's coming here. He's going to be here next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. He, he so told us. Yeah. We can. Oh, there you go. I'll ask him. <laughs> but that's um, it, it is, and that and that's a science that I think there's people that go to university and study all this sort of stuff now, mm -hmm. the algorithms and all yep. this, and you know, like you know. Like all of us, we, you know, you guys work full time. Yeah. We all work full. This is this is in our full time gig. We just do it for the love of it more than anything. But it's hard to try and make this work when you're when you're up against an algorithm with that you don't know how it's changing. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, for sure. That was one of the questions that I had for you because I, I, we all seem to be fighting YouTube versus Facebook issues. I've noted that when we link a YouTube video on Facebook, it doesn't rate it at all. So there is, there well, is something. You, you're better off uh, actually putting it on YouTube and just putting the link on Facebook. Yeah. So that way it all get the Facebook actually likes it. And, um, YouTube gives you all the credit for it and it all links together. And at the end of the day, Google overall gives you a higher rating if you have it on multiple platforms. Yep. So that's why we have like TikTok, which we don't have a great deal of views on there all the time. We have made average around about 200 views per video uh, that we put up and they're only short ones. Uh, Instagram, we're not that big on, but we have it on there. Um, and then we have the Facebook and, and YouTube. Yeah. Uh, YouTube's our main one, and then we have our own website, so yeah. and we put it up on there as well. Yeah, so your website is very good, very very good. It's yep. a very good website. So I didn't know you did TikTok as well. So because I know zero about TikTok. Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
What's yeah. the what's the so you said you got to keep it short? Am I right in saying like sub one minute? Oh yeah, definitely. If you can keep it under that one minute mark, or uh, even if you can, if you can get it in for fifteen seconds and capture what you need to capture, that's the perfect mark. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. The, it's TikTok and those kind of shorts are, are built to just do very very short attention span videos. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, okay. And even then, not everyone will sit through a one minute video. Mm -hmm. And you look at the uh, the, the schedules and uh, what we've got on the back end of the analytics, and we'll find that people will, halfway through it, will go, oh, I'm done, and not even a minute, yeah, and they're down. Yeah. You know, they just go, now I'm moving on to the next one, because they can just scroll through, because there's hundreds of them. So how hard is it then? Well, like, I mean, when you say that, because we're trying to tap a market that's, uh, the market, that you, I think you've already tapped is like our age. Yep. You know, yep. that sort of yep. late 40s, early 50s. That, I think you've done really well there. How hard is it to get like, so my 16, my 15 year old son, who's on TikTok and all that, all those platforms, how hard is it to get someone like him, drag him in? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost impossible. Yeah, probably, so. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we don't, target uh, the the younger generation cars at the moment unfortunately uh, in, our, in our videos we're more that muscle classic kind yep. of style but then again we've got a lot of people that are actually at that younger generation they're still watching so we've got a good what 20 percent of um, our audience is watching it from that age group yeah and it's still climbing because there's still kids out there that are actually heavily involved and they love that kind of classic yeah. look and they want to do it. They just want to follow in their father's footsteps. I've never understood the like the the, the guy that just came to WA just recently, in the last few days, Logan Paul. Yeah. Not my kids follow him. The the guy is. The UFC guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's yeah. a wrestler, but he's not really. He's not a very good wrestler. I don't think. I, I really don't know a lot about him, but I, I don't understand how someone like him can have twenty four million followers. No. Um, yet the story that you guys are telling is warrants it, they're great stories but the guy that yeah. wrestles and sells energy drinks just doesn't excite yeah. me enough for the game <laughs> but it excites <laughs> excite someone too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is it's like if you were doing something silly or ridiculous or whatever our views would probably be even higher than that yeah um, but because we're doing it about cars it's not as high and not only that, if we were in, if we were in the eastern states, or even if we were in the U.S., for example, and we were doing the same thing as what we're doing right now, we would be a lot bigger than what we're doing mm -hmm. because the actual market for that is huge. Mm -hmm. Whereas over in WA, it's smaller. Eastern yeah. states is bigger, and that's hence why we've got a lot of our audiences is in the eastern states. But we're trying to make sure that the WA audience grows and we get the acknowledgement that's why we're trying to prevent um sorry not prevent um present um car shows what events are coming up where we're going to be what kind of cars are out there finding all these hidden gems in the woodwork and yeah mm. stuff yeah. like that yeah, yeah no that's it's 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 interesting to say the least and trying to work that all out is is, is an art of its own yeah. talk us through the youtube partnership program well, Dan can't answer this one because he doesn't know anything no. about it. <laughs> I just had to console him when he was banging his head against the wall. <laughs> so trying to figure it all out. <laughs> it's the, the program is quite, uh, once you get there um, and you actually um, get approved, you get your thousand subscribers and you've done your 4,000, I think, hours of watch time. 4,500 watch time. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Once you've done that, then you just basically, it's... It, Pretty much got to go through the process and, and click everything and make sure that you meet their standards you meet their requirements so the first step thing is you know applying for it that takes like 24 hours for them to apply um to say yes or no if they're going to do it um just to initially even look at it um and then you once you've done that then you have to put an adsense campaign um which is a part of that You've got to get that done. That generally takes around about a week or two to get sorted. Sometimes less, depends on the situation at the time. Um, and then the third step, that, that, that may take a week or so. 
Yeah, okay. You know, and then once that's done, then you've got to look at how you're going to monetize your channel. And it's not as simple as, oh, we'll press a button and, you know, you do it. You have to literally work out when you're going to play it, where you're going to put the ads in front of your videos, at the end of the videos or in the middle of the videos and get all that done. Plus, you then also got to watch out for, well, hang on a minute, every time this ad stop, starts, well, my video stops. People switch off and go. So yeah. you've got to be mindful of that. So we started at first when we first went to try us by just putting ads on anything and we just went, oh, well, let's, have, let's run the luck and see how we go. But then we realized, hang on a minute, no, we're losing viewers. So we've stopped that now. So on our main interviews, we are actually only putting um, the ads at the start and at the end. And all the way through the video is clear from ads because we don't want anyone interrupting what we're showing. At the end of that, that's it. Very interesting. I didn't know. Did you know that? That you, that I, I didn't. I did not know that you actually choose where the ads go in. Yeah. Yeah. You don't choose what ad there are, but you choose where you where you want to put them in your videos areas. Okay. You know, I didn't know that. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I helped uh, Brendan out. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Hello, Brendan. So yeah. Yeah. So the, the philosophy is in the middle of the video would not be a great idea because you feel that people would turn. Well, yeah, especially for interviews, I think if people will switch off. If it was a, if we were doing a filming a car show, for example, we and we're not interviewing anyone, uh, we just put the ads where wherever mm. it needs to be. We're not worried about it, but we don't want people getting interrupted when we're trying to talk about the car or the background story or things like that because we've been finding that people just go well look no I, I don't want to add i just want to watch what you've mm. got i want to see what's going on with this car i want to find out more and and deep dive into that because some of the stuff that we've shown some people some people are going that doesn't exist and then we've gone yes it does and then we've, we've actually shown them in the video but we've also then backed it up by providing them all the evidence in the description so they can read it and then click the links and go look for themselves and go oh holy crap it does it does exist yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah okay no, it's, that's, it's, i should look into that I mean, we should look at the youtube part. if you help brendan you can help me do that Oh yeah, the shopping, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's job, Tom. That yeah, yeah. YouTube I'll, I'll partnership program. Yeah, right. Tomorrow yeah. morning, nine o'clock. You definitely <laughs> got to get your views and everything yeah. up before, before you do it. All right, okay. All right, yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, maybe, maybe wipe it. No, a secret weapon. What's that? The camera. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the camera's yes. <laughs> I've, I've. This is something that's come into my mind as well, and I've often questioned. I've uh, spoken to Todd about it. Have you guys ever considered like a live, like a, a live panel show, like what we're doing, but live? Um, I think you should say that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we pretty much just started um, pretty much exactly that um, on a separate YouTube channel. So we're getting together with Raw Talk, mm -hmm. um, Tex at Raw Talk, and um, we want to just present a monthly show that just talks about the upcoming events, events we've been to in the past month. Uh, we want it to be quite an informative show, um, so the people will tune in to say, oh, I want to see what's coming up this month, and these yeah. guys always do a list of the shows coming up, that sort of thing. But yeah. yeah, we also want to get people in on the panel, talk to them and that sort of thing. So Yeah, yeah so that, that is something that we're kind of having a crack at. Yeah, and, um, and we so have, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. we have also like sat there and, and did a live stream with you know, subscribers. Um, from time to time. Okay. Um, yeah, we did one that uh, what, just before Christmas, and yeah, that went well, quite well. Christmas, and we're going to yeah. do another one very shortly again. And we just get feedback and get to get questions, and involvement, and stuff like that. Find yeah. out what they want. We're always asking for what you guys want to see on our channel. So, mm. and everyone wants to know the rare stuff, the, the stuff that no one knows about, and things like that. So we're always trying to find those. Yeah. And and they're out there, you know. Even on Sunday, we found a Monaro that was a pre-production Monaro, and it doesn't have a number on it because it wasn't part of the production list. Oh. Yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, it was a yeah. H HQ two door as well. Yeah, HQ. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. 
There's so many stories out there, isn't there, really? Oh, yeah, there is. Look at it. Oh, there's heaps of people have heaps of, of stories and, and yeah, it's unearthing that. But yep. yeah, no, it's, that's that's um, great to hear. I, yeah, I've often thought we've spoke, we've thrown it around, bandaged it yeah. around like a live panel show. I, I don't know, I haven't got my head around it. I, I'm not, we're all pre-recorded, so, you know, and then we cut out the bits that we, you know, yeah. That we don't. We yeah. don't. So I, I haven't done it yet, but I've, I've, that was one of the questions that I had for you guys. I'm really interested in the incentive or the, the, the what you're running down at uh, Pinjara Max. Richie does magnificent show down there. We've had Richie yeah. on the podcast before. Richie Howlett, for those that are listening and don't know who we're talking about. Um, so Pinjara Max, tell us about the YouTube corner you've got happening down there. Yeah, we've just got a, uh, yeah. a few of the other YouTube channels that we're in, con in conjunction with, yeah? and yeah. so we thought, well, we might as well all get together at a show. We've got a, a good relationship with Richie, so we asked him mm. if we could do that, and he said, yeah, yeah, no problems at all. Yeah. So there's about four or five of us on board at the moment. We've got um, Automated Carnage coming down, yeah. down the shed with Byron. Um, Raw Talk. Raw Talk, yeah, of course, and yeah. there's us, and yeah. Bad Q should be there as well. Yep. yep, back here, garage, yep. Yeah, and it, we just thought it was an opportunity to, to get the, the cars and stuff that people are seeing on our channels out in the real world so people could just come and see them for real and have a chat with us and mm. yeah, that yeah. sort of thing, you know, just sort of... Um, so they could meet us in person, that sort of thing. So yeah, it also yeah. promotes that car scene in general in WA, you know, and, and brings more people because they see it on our shows and on their channels. Mm. And if we can bring them to that scene, on the day it's even better so we're trying to promote that as much as we can yeah. um and both me and dan like car lovers as it is and we've got our own cars and we're car fans and we try to get out to everything we can mm -hmm. i think, I think yeah. tragics is the word yeah probably <laughs> tragic yeah, yeah <laughs> that's for sure well speak right on cue um i think i've got here like talk us through your what got you started in the car scene and then follow on like your current rides now but what what got you guys I mean, daniel from canberra yeah was it did um, you grow up, grow up summit, with summit yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah so it was. but it was actually a um it was funny um i used to drive to foster town curry as a kid with my parents to go up and see my dad's uh, parents that lived up there and we were sitting in newcastle at the back of newcastle one day to drive a revival it was about two o'clock in the morning or something and this green panel van rumbled around the roundabout with the tailgate up and the surfboard sticking out the back and I just thought, yeah, I really like that. So that was kind of the planting of the seed. I don't know how old I was, I was probably about 12 or something. You know yeah. I mean? but, uh, but I always loved the XYs as well. And, yep. um, and also growing up on the farm, Dad was always fixing our own cars and we were, so we were always pulling motors out and, and that sort of thing. So I think it was just in me from the beginning. but. But yeah, I'll always remember that night to go, yeah, that's when I think I fell in love with panel vans and then it was it was all over after that I had to get yeah. panel vans, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yourself, Bill? Uh, pretty much, like, my old man was always into cars as well, not to uh, massive detail. He always, always fixing them and stuff like that. Um, but then when he was in the army, he actually had an accident, he went blind. And from there, then he had to, make me do some of the work yeah. so from that i started playing around with the cars with them and fixing them and every time we needed stuff and that got me hooked and then it just carried on from there and i just kept the, the ball rolling and yeah i just loved pulling stuff apart and putting it back together again yeah, okay. making a roll down the street and yeah. just yeah it's just nothing better it's relaxing it's soothing sometimes it can be frustrating yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. um yeah but yep. most of the time it's it's great but uh, yeah, yeah. And you go looking for that ten mil socket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone looks for the ten mil socket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of your own, your own car, then talk us through that how-to section that you've got going on your YouTube channel. So there was the the uh, the install of a radiator overflow. Yep. Like, is that something that you got that you guys are going to expand on, or? Well, we've got a yeah. couple of projects going. Yeah. Um, obviously, Phil's working on his van just constantly I've got the Cortina um, yeah. so that's the one I'm going to be doing but um, so the how-to stuff I guess just a bit of fun in the garage like when you figure out something you just go oh yeah might as well just um, show what I've learned sort of thing yeah, or just yeah. something simple Pretty but um, yeah we'll be getting a bit more deeper into into things I mean uh, Phil did the V8 conversion on the mm -hmm. XC uh, yeah. late last year so that was a pretty big one yeah 
and um, yeah, the Cortina's getting a whole heap of goodies. So yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to sort of build that up for some roll racing and some drag racing and that sort of thing. Well, talk um, us through the Cortina while while we're here. I'm not familiar with that. that your your Cortina. Yeah, well, it's actually my wife's Cortina. Yeah. Uh, funnily enough. T. Yeah. It's a TE. T. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Seventy nine. So I bought it for her to drive to uni when she was doing her law degree. I won't say how long ago because it will be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was just a blue bomb that we pulled out of my mate's backyard. And um, yeah, we had to replace a door and a guard on it. And that was bright orange because they were the only parts I could get at the time. So it was a blue car with bright orange panels on it. So it was yeah. a, bit of, a bit of a bomb. But uh, I had a little 200 motor in it at the time. So we quickly rebuilt it. And um, yeah, it did her for the three years of going to uni. And then after that, she had the choice to get rid of it and get a little buzz box or to, to do something with it. So she decided, no, 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 let's paint it. Let's all do it. Uh, at the time, I had my own trim shop in Canberra. So, yep. And right next door was a mate of mine I grew up in the suburbs with. So he was running a paint shop. So between the two of us, we um, we bartered with each other and we yeah. we helped each other out and built some cool cars and Cortina was one of them. So mm -hmm. she picked the colours that got painted up, hot our screen, and we did uh, full trim and everything in it. Yep. And then we drove it around for ages, did some outs a few times in it. And then it got a 200 stroker engine after that, and that was pretty good. Mm. And then it came over, we came over here, and it pretty much sat in the shed for about seven years untouched. Yep. So I thought, oh, I've got to get it out. And anyway, the more I started playing with it, the less the wife wants to drive it, because I put nitrous on it and, and a few other things and took it down the drag strip and uh, had a bit of fun with it. And um, yeah, of course, it didn't go fast enough and blew the head <laughs> gasket, so now we're... We're going to the next stage, so now it's getting a, a turbo and uh, oh, wow. fuel injection system. I've just got an ice ignition system for it, so yeah. convert it to coil packs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Got a Haltech uh, 2500 to run it all. Um, still got the nitrous there, so that'll be run back into it. Got all the sensors and everything, so it'll be just a nice tunable little fun car, hopefully. They're nice and light, so um, yeah, so that it should go well. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome, awesome. Yeah. Now I, you've got also the H, the, the uh, I've got a, Yeah, I've got a WB. WB, as that's well. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But and I've also HQ. got another one. Yeah, I've also got another one hiding around the corner. It's a HQ that I bought when I was eighteen. Okay. Um, I've managed to hold on to it for all these years. Oh so, wow! Yeah. Yeah, I took it off the road in two thousand and one um, to do some work to it, and it stayed off the road ever since. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> traveling and buying houses and all that kind of stuff. It's a handbrake on those things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I've really just waited and till probably a bit later in life where I've got a better budget to do that one. So, yeah. so that's uh, the next one on the dropping block as I'm playing with the Cortina to make it go fast and have a bit of fun mm. and then I'll, I'll build that up as a show car. Oh wow. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's... I like the uh, the WB as well because that's got the, yeah. the, the unique front end, that, that one. The, not, yeah, it's not, got the tradie yeah. front end on yeah, it. The trade, the trade pack, yeah, yeah, so yes. it's, um, yeah. It's probably I'm, rarer than the square headlight yeah, front end now, yeah. isn't it? I've had people ask me what the hell is it? And yeah. I've also had some guy come up and said, I love the custom front end you've got on this. And I'm like, oh, well, it's <laughs> yeah, certainly not custom. But, yeah. but um, you don't see them you with don't, that, no. the trade, the trading front end. I remember talking to you at the at the show about yeah. that because you don't see many like that anymore. They're, they're, uh, and the ones that were probably got changed to the square headlight WB. Front yeah, they anyway. were. Like, yeah, because that was yeah. definitely the more popular one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, it's very rare, that, that front end. Yeah, I think I've seen one other since I've been in Perth, and that was still painted the original factory silver because they all came out that silver. They colour. did, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah yes. And the bumper bars were painted and everything, so yeah. there's no chrome on mine, but I just painted it all black. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it looks cool. I like it. I yeah. like it. And Phil, talk us through. I did see your XC that day as well. Talk us through that. Yeah, the XC was um, basically uh, got that project after I sold my Sandman because I had a uh, HX Sandman that was all original and I was matching and it was an original six cylinder Sandman it was you couldn't touch it because it was just pristine yeah. and it had all been rebuilt and we we put about I think I put about nine grand in that car and then got it done um, to get it to where it needed to be and it was a nice car and it was perfect in every way but it was getting harder and harder for me to drive because my, my legs plays up every now and again. So I just went, oh, well, time to sell it on. And the right offer came at the right time and mm. ended up moving that on for a good chunk of change. So I got rid of that and then I went, well, I still want to be involved in the band club and I still want to be involved in that scene. So 
what am I going to get next? And looked around at Holden's and Ford's and tried to find a Valiant and, and all sorts of other kind of cars. At the end, I end up finding this, a couple of XCs over in the Eastern States. And okay. this was probably the better out of the three of them or four of them I looked at. Um, some of them, like, you could put your fist through the actual roof and they were going, oh, no, no, it's just a little bit of rust. It's like, no, <laughs> you put your fist through the roof, that's a lot, yeah, you know, is. kind of thing. Uh, whereas my XE's got hardly any. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't look the prettiest at the moment, but it's straightforward. But it's it's a numbers matching car um, when I got it. And I've still got the numbers matching six at the moment, even though I've taken it out. Mm. But the whole idea of that car was to change that from being um, my personal car to be more of a Aussie Garage promo car. Oh yeah. Yep. So we're going to change that up and um, make it so when we rock up to a show, it represents what we do. We're going to have um, what is it, a projector in the back of the van come down so we can show uh, videos when we're at the shows yep. and it can play on a loop and things like that and then it'll just retract up into the ceiling so no one knows it's even there. Yeah. Um, gonna fix up all the interior and, and then we'll do the outside eventually and yep. we'll keep working on it until it gets to the point where it looks good and we can roll out to shows and it's gonna be perfect. Was it my my imagination? Did that have the Windsor, the, the EFI Windsor in it? No, it just had the um, uh, 302, yeah. uh, 302 yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. Um, got that out of a F100 that had just been rebuilt probably 5,000 Ks before that. Um, and we dropped it in there. It's got a C4 with the shift kit in it. Mm. Still got the Borg Warner original standard diff in it, stuff like that. Um, yeah. The seats are going to get redone, but <laughs> i got a tremor. And he's doing it. So um, he's doing the whole lot for us in nice uh, leather and everything else. Mm. Uh, it's going to look perfect. Yeah. No, no, beautiful. No, they are nice. You guys are obviously into the van scene. Yes. It's, it's a little yep. bit unique, isn't it? I mean, it's not It's not, not for everyone, but I, no. I like, you know, if, I think once you've, like the Sandman's really kicked it off, I guess, for the for the whole scene though, many, many years ago. Yeah. And they sort of gained popularity again, I think in recent years. Yeah. They're definitely and starting to come back again now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because they're so rare. That's, that's, well, that all, pa all panel vans of all, they're just, forget Sandman's, like yours, yours, you just don't see them anymore. So I think no. that's what the, the beauty is, that's what, they're kind of back in vogue again, I guess. Yeah, yeah. trying to get a, uh, a Chrysler Drifter is like oh. pulling your teeth out. Yeah. Like <laughs> people are chasing those things all over the place and they can't get them. Yeah. Has Clint still got his Clint Ford? Has he, has he you know, Clint? Clint, I'm sure. Nighttime car cruisers, he's probably listening. Message just Clint, I guess. That's his beautiful yeah. one, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that one. No. Uh, Clint Ford from Nighttime Car Cruisers. I don't know if he still has his. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful example of Drifter. Yep. This one. Yeah. Um, I know you can't give too much away, but can you tell us your favourite car event in WA? Like, which is the one you enjoy, or you like when when you set when you sit down together, you think, right, Phil, Dan, well, we we definitely have to go to this event. What what would be your number one event in, in WA? WA? Well, for different reasons, there'd be a couple of events. So I'd say I, I don't know if I could pin one down. Yeah, um, we go up to Dongra every year for the Dongra Sprint. And that's just a fantastic weekend away. It's a great <laughs> yeah. show, you know. Yeah. We just love get, getting up there, so that's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good cruise. It's a good cruise going up. There. Yeah, I mean, it's a good drive up there. You know, it's a three and a half hour, four hour drive up there, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, that is has to be one of the most underrated events. I actually haven't been, but everyone that talks to me about that one tells me how great that one is. It's awesome. Yeah, mm. it's just it's right on the water. It's just perfect. You just, you're camping there and all camping all and got one of those uh, chalets like we had. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're just there for the whole weekend just chilling and do whatever you want. And then you got the show on Sunday and mm. drive back Monday morning and that's it. That's April, is that right? No, nah, it's uh, late, oh, yeah, later in the year, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's later. September or something, I think it is, September. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, very underrated. Not many people know about it. I don't know if it's that yeah. heavily promoted. I know in Geraldton because I go up to Geraldton a lot for work. 
I know it's heavily promoted up there, so a lot of people from Geraldton come down to Dongra. Yeah, it's yeah. only seventy k's, like forty five minutes away. Yeah. So it's it's great. And if people that are listening, head to head to that show because yeah, I, you probably want. Do you get accommodation in Dongra, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have to book it a year in advance. Really, <laughs> the sea spray. Yeah, sure. you get the. That's that's really nice there. The sea spray. Oh, uh, it's a big yeah. four caravan park. Big spray. four. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, something like that. Yeah. But you do have to book a year in advance, and yeah. But otherwise, apart from that, I think yeah, it's, it's a great show. And, yeah. 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 I suppose, but I suppose my favourite one would probably be I like the state titles. Yeah. Because you've got all panel vans and utes in one place on one day. And you can see all the different variants of what people have got inside the cars and their, how they've done the interiors and what they've done with murals and all sorts of things on the car. I like that. You have to forgive me for asking, but is that augering in again with Max this year? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other great thing. You've got Max right next to it. So you're all yeah. in the same oval. So it's not just panel vans. Yes. It's, um, alongside another very good car show. It is. It's good yeah. that they have those two together. I just wasn't sure if they were doing it again this year. Yeah. Know, yeah. So it's know. on the um, 2nd of April um, at Sir Ross McLarkin. Sir Ross McLarkin. Yeah, oval in Pinjarra. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great event. And we've we're hoping to get a lot more um, attraction this year because not only this year, we've actually included a lot more uh, variety and a lot more classification. So we've got everything from modern vans to big vans, small vans, uh, also modern utes. Uh, we've got um, old utes, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So anything from that age from day dot to now. Yeah. We're trying to cover in a panel van and a youth or of any description. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. Now, for our listeners that are listening, that is not Easter weekend. Previously, it has clashed with Easter weekend. Yeah, it has. Yeah, true, yeah, but this yeah. year, it's the week before Easter. Before, yeah. So that's good news. There's yeah, really no yeah. excuse not to get down there. Yeah. It's been, uh, yeah, I should try and get down there and support Richie as well. I know Richie's a great guy and, um, you know, a friend of the podcast, and uh, we should try and get down there as well. Yeah, it's a great day out. Yeah. There's no. heaps of things to do. This year they're bringing back the uh, dyno testing um, uh, challenge this yep. year as well, so that should be good. I mean, last year we had 50 panel vans and utes there, uh, all on display, and it was it was perfect. And you saw some rare ones that you just don't ever see very often. Sundown is that you know come out of the woodwork, um, original sand vans that all numbers matching. It's just great. Yeah. The locals down there as well. There's a lot of there's a lot of nice cars down there. Yeah. Uh, Harvey, yeah, yeah. of hit that Mandra, of course. Yep. Yeah. Filling up, tucked yeah. away. That come yeah. out of that because there's this there's some really nice cars down that neck of the woods. Oh yeah, definitely, so, definitely. definitely. Uh, yeah, we we're finding cars everywhere. Everywhere yeah. we go, once you start scratching, you know, and people get the idea of what you're there for. You know, we went out to. Uh, Cool and encouraging last year. And yeah, that was awesome. Oh, man, did we find some cars out there? You I know? saw you. Yeah, yeah, so I love that. Yeah, because I have had family in Coolan. So yeah, for me, I'm like, you're in Coolan. Actually, I guess we asked to show you. Uh, Jared is from Coolan. Yep. And yeah, every time someone says Coolan, I'm like, I know where you guys are. Don't know who that guy is, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's great to get out into the country. When country people look at life so differently to, to city folk, like we were talking to them about their cars, they've Yep. They, you know, they talk about tyres, you know, the best tyres for going long distances and they've all got ball bars <laughs> oh, because yeah. of kangaroos and all the rest of it, you know what I mean? So they just build their cars yeah. still really beautifully, but just differently to the yeah, city Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, we uncovered some really good ones while we were there. I mean, we were only there for like a, a day, really, and then we came back the next day. But while we were there, one of the guys goes, well, hey, you come back down here next year or any time you want, we'll make sure there'll be 60, 70, 80 cars on the oval ready to go for you to interview. And we'll put on a, a big smoker, one of the guys built yeah, these big a massive smoker. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, like it's a massive and it's awesome. And he goes, yeah, we'll just fire it up and get ready to party. You know, I went, okay, sounds but good. Apparently there's a guy out there with uh, one of every Holden ever built. Yeah, something like that. One yeah. of every model. And then there was another bunch of blokes out there that had ESPs or something hiding out on their property too. Yeah, there's sheds yeah, full of yeah. old ESPs and stuff, you know. So there's lots of stuff out there that no one would really know that's there, yeah, I reckon, until you actually started having a look and talking to people and getting yeah. into locals and 
just, yeah, finding out just what's around. There's heaps of stuff we're finding. Yeah, Isn't it funny? Sure. You know, years ago, I've been working in agriculture all my life, and when I first started out, people used to say to me, "When you're out in the bush, look out for there's, yeah. there's old cars out there, and they don't know how much they're worth. Yeah, try, yeah. try and get one." You're dreaming, they don't know how much. Of course, they know how much. And they're smarter than us. They, yeah. Of course, yeah. they know how. They haven't sold them. They, 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 uh, they, yeah. That is a major fallacy. I yeah. tell everyone that says that yeah. to me. Did you find a barn find? I said, yeah, they're probably. I've seen many cars. <laughs> yeah. I said, they're not going to be selling that. You nah, know, it's yeah, like yeah. those days were. I don't think they ever existed, to be honest with you. Like well, barn. they did. Like, I mean, I remember my uncle um, is in the central west of New South Wales. and 20 years ago, there were people heading out there with um, car carriers, basically, and just going around the farms and seeing what they can get on the back of and then take it back to Sydney or something. Yeah, yeah. Them, yeah. You know? But, um, um, but yeah. that was back in the day when you could pick them up cheaper, yeah. you know, because like, people, it hadn't really kicked off back then, you know, the whole mad pricing. But, you know, DJ from Automotive Carnage, he's still doing it now. He's going out, he found like a pacer and a creek bed and he's, he's rebuilding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're still there and they're still out there but yeah uh, but the dj does get off the beaten track he does Fairly get off the you have to get off the beaten track <laughs> yeah, as well yeah, like yeah. if you stay on like brand yeah. highway or grid ocean road yeah, yeah. you're gonna you get, yeah you're gonna see the one in the shed but you know so do a thousand other people that are driving past every day yeah, yeah. you've got to go off yeah. off off road off the track and yeah, yeah. Dig deep in, well yeah. dj goes for sure many many hundreds of kilometers off the road and he's yeah he's out in the middle of wa to start with He's nowhere yeah, in civilization. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was on farm just the other day. <laughs> this, I was on farm the other day, and there was an EA Fairmont gear. They caught yep. my eye. I'm not a, I'm a Ford man, but the EA doesn't insane. But I couldn't tell. It was, it was in a paddock far away. Yeah. And I said, is that EA or EB? He goes, that's EA. And I said, oh, I said, oh, it wasn't. I was. If it was EB, I might have had a, you know, a bit of a crack. He goes, yep. oh, but it's not for sale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's an EA. Yeah, it's amazing what's becoming classic cool. now. Yeah. 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 And it was left outside too. This wasn't in a barn. So, yeah, yeah it was, um, it's just, yeah. It's, but it's, the, the amount of people that we also meet, they go, nah, it's there. I'm going to do it up one day. It's been rusting in the yard for like God knows how many years. And yeah. they're just going, I'm going to do it up one day. And, and you look at it and go, no, that, that should be back on the road. Like someone get it back on the road. Hurry up about it. You know, it's like it's awesome. Yeah, was, there was a whole uh, little town called Peak Hill um, near Parks. And um, it had a massive yard full of old American cars. And this guy wouldn't sell anything. His sons were going to do them all up one day. and. In the end, he died, and the scrappies came in, took a lot, you know, and by then it had been sitting there outside in the weather for. I mean, central west New South Wales isn't too bad for rust, but yeah. um, but credit to the scrappy, he looked, lined them all up and sold them all off to people. So they yeah. did get out there in the end, but yeah, they were probably I mean, a lot worse for wear than what they would have been when they parked them there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. When you when you're at a car show, like what? what I guess. I guess. How do you fit in with the promoters? Like, you, do you tell them in advance you're coming, or you just? No, we just rock yeah, up. Yep. You know, if, if the car shows on, everyone's yeah ready to go. So we just yeah, it's a public event. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, oh no, I'm just saying, but like yeah. yeah, have you ever had the inclination then to 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 run your own show or do your own 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 event? Well, maybe later on down the track, but there's, there's a lot involved in that at the moment, and um, for us, we just. Unfortunately, I don't think we have the time to actually do it. No, not not, not, not yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard yeah. because I, I we've spoken about it numerous times, like doing our own car show as well. And I think yeah. to myself, yeah, we can, but like, a we're going to start competing like just about every weekend, except for June, July, and August, really. Here. Yeah, just about every weekend there's some sort of car show or something going on. Yeah. Classic cars and coffee now is monthly, you know what I mean? Custom cars and coffees uh, almost monthly as well. Yeah. It's really hard to fit in with someone else. Like you don't want to overlap with their show, but it is it is difficult. We've toyed with the idea, but mm. you know, again, we've come to the same yeah. same conclusion. A, probably lack of time will be also, yeah. I think let's just stick to what we're doing and we'll do, you know, we'll do this. Yeah. And, and I think like with the, um, the c4c that's just come in too that's made a massive difference because now there's all these clubs that have now formed on that basis and they're massive clubs now 
and they've come out of that because people want that C4C. So now they're having events. So you now on one weekend, you may have five or six events to go to on one weekend, and we just look at it and go, well, we can't get to every single event. As much as we want to film every single event, we just can't. Yeah, you just definitely spoil for choice at this time of year anyway. Through, yeah, through that's the warmer months. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Look, I, I I echo the same sentiments that you just said. Then I mean, I run I run a car club as well, born out of C for C, yeah. mm -hmm. and we we run events monthly, and we're often clashing. We did one last weekend. Didn't realise not we didn't realise, but I, I thought motivation might have gone back to January weekend, but it didn't. Yeah. So we clashed with motivation. We clashed with the Bathurst twelve hour. Yeah, uh, we clashed a lot of our members are Italian, so they were making sauce that weekend as well, yep, yep. like <laughs> I normally do. Yeah, yeah. we just clashed with so many things, and yep. yeah, in the end, we didn't get a very good turnout at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's and that's hard, and that's why I say to these guys, I think maybe just leave the the car shows to to, to people that do car shows. I mean, I would love to see WA have a an event like what they do over in Eastern States, like the Motor X event, or something like mimic the schema event in, that the US has, and have all the tradespeople there, all the suppliers there, showing off their wares and what they've got to offer everyone, and all having all the, the best of the best engineered cars on display, and that is it. And it'd be a yeah. great event, like in a we big a show, pavilion. Show. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. And just have that, and then have everyone come in there, and also have stuff like they do at like Schema, where you can trial out trying to put seats in, or trial out putting motors together, or put stereos in, or something like that, where suppliers are actually donating their time and they're helping car builders do that. But we don't have any of that. Mm. Um, yeah. We barely get suppliers out because it's just half the time it's not worth their while. Um, they're out there all day and they're losing business from the shop where they could be there. Whereas if we had something that was big enough that would warrant it, that they could actually make money there as well as make money at the shop, mm -hmm. that would be awesome to have in WI. Yeah. Well, it was good to see at Motivation this year. Rare spares were back. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was awesome. There. Um, I'm not sure who else was there. They're the only two big ones, I think, that were there. Uh, but at least they were there and they wanted to support the show. And they, yeah. they all said to us that they're just trying to get back into the scene just to see how it goes for them. Yeah. So if uh, we can support their businesses while they're at the shows, then they'll support more shows hopefully. Oh, and uh, NGK was there too with their yeah, spark plugs. Right. They yeah, were there, yeah. and, they, and they, was, they pretty much supplying every week, or everyone with spark plugs that weekend. And, and also, um, Burson's had parts going out the shelf because everyone was blowing parts out there on the cars doing burnouts. Mm. So. Well, that's one thing with the driving event, isn't it? You know, yeah. like motivation's very become very much a driver's event. A bit like the summer notes, you know, they've got Skid yeah. Row now, they've got cruising up and down the drag strip, all that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. things are bound to break and go wrong. So yeah, yeah. It, you make an interesting point about rare spares. I've I've noticed that as well. Like they're a supporter of our car club too, so they have a, a car club scheme as well. Yeah. So yeah. members of car clubs get discounts as well. They've been extremely helpful. I don't know if it coincided with the ownership of Repco since we've got, sorry, Global Parts Group, yeah. or Global Parts Company, sorry, bought them. Yeah. I don't know if it's all tied in together because they're all they're all one big company now. But yeah. it seemed to be that they are. Look, Aaron, shout out to Aaron here at Rare Spares in Aussie Park. Aaron and Jason, by yeah. the way, they're yeah. awesome guys. They do a magnificent job, and yeah. Aaron will bend over backwards for anyone. You know. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, like even if they haven't got a part coming in, or if the parts coming in, he puts it aside. You know, and you go there on Saturday morning, pick it up. He does that all the time. So probably shouldn't advertise that too much. Right. <laughs> well, apparently, the, yeah. one of the new things they're doing now is you can actually order your rare spares parts through Repco stores. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. 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 Deliver to your Repco store. Yeah. yeah. So Repco now will have access to the rare spares inventory. Yeah, the whole and so lot. Yeah. 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 When you go into your Repco store, you give them the rare spares part number. Yeah, they've got to be this one. She's sitting shepherded and away they go. So yeah, yeah. Lots changed there, and uh, it's noticeable that rare spares are. Well, I shouldn't say that, but they they have change their way, their method of marketing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, even Repco, Repco was off the scene for ages. Right? Weren't doing any sponsorship for any car club throughout WA at all. Mm -hmm. And then they've realized, hang on a minute, we've got a massive hole here 
and people are wanting it and they're not getting any representation in that scene. Mm. And now, like they now they're sponsoring Northern Steel um, and they've only just signed that up, I think it was in January, just before that yep. event. And so now they're starting to get back into the scene where they're going to support car clubs around WA and they're looking for, uh, actively looking for car clubs to go, what can we do for you? Mm. So if you're a car club, then you've got to go hit them up. Yeah. Um, but I think the store has only got limited what they can do. They can only give out like a bucket of cleaning goods or something like that. Yeah. But if you go to the corporate, well, then they've got more options for mm. you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's certainly very helpful, Repco. Team at Repco. Hello, yeah. shout out to Repco. Yeah. <laughs> no, we get there. But so if you do need parts, and this is a shout out to the uh, radio station as well, yeah. Repco Allenbrook. I've got a friend that works there and is very helpful. So and they're, they're all very, the Repco stores are all very helpful. Yeah, they all yeah. are. Yeah. So, yeah, so. That's it. Yeah. I mean, as YouTubers, as podcasters, I guess we've all got to be sort of singing from the same hymn, uh, hymn page, don't we? So, yeah. you know, yeah, sure. they're, they're, they're important vendors for us as well. Um, we, we don't have any, should put it out there, we don't have any sponsorship agreement with these companies, but yeah. but they, <laughs> they certainly help. Yeah. I know they certainly help the scene, let's put yeah. it that way. So, so yeah. yeah, we just thought it was great to see them back out uh, in the scene again at the shows. Um, yeah. Selling their wares, doing their thing, and talking to people. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Could be for all. I think Burson's a part of the same group, aren't they? GPC. I'm pretty sure Burson's a GPC as well. I'm not oh, sure. I wouldn't yeah. have a clue. Yeah. I need to probably check that. But yeah. I think they're part of. They're all part of the same family yeah. now. Yeah. Look, Burson seem to be sponsoring a few things around Australia, so they seem to be keen on on getting into that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big business, car parts. It's it's there's no doubt about it. Yeah. What's next for you guys? Well, I think more than anything, we're trying to really hone on what we do as far as our video skills and um, get it right. Mm. Um, but we're also actively chasing people that have got collections and rare cars, um, not just the everyday kind of car as well, um, which are great. And we love interviewing them and we'll interview anyone. Um, but the rare ones and the, uh, the diamonds in the rough, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. We, we Things like, like um, that phase five we came across. Yeah, the stuff like that. Day. That was really interesting. You know, and it was just, we I'd never seen one before. I didn't even know phase five existed. You know, yeah, so, so that was an XD, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's one in WA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's one here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rare as anything, you know, I'm like, I didn't even know it existed, so... That was um, at the Serbian Club, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was, yeah we had it, it was, I think it was uh, the Shannon's Southern, Southern Coffee. Coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah, and, um, you know, even at uh, the Jindalup Festival, there was a uh, Monaro convertible. Um, oh, the VN. Yeah, VS. Uh, no, VN. Oh, I VN. saw that, yeah. yes, yeah yeah, 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 that's, that's a, that's, that's, that's... That was one of one, and yeah. no one realized well, they existed, and they did. It existed, and that video got a lot of attention, even yeah. if people were saying how terrible it looked and yeah. <laughs> how it never should have been built. Yeah, yeah. but you, the key to that video, I think, was also you know what got my attention. A, I'd seen the car, uh, classic cars and coffee, but also was the thumbnail as well that you used yeah. with that video. I found yeah. it quite. I said, "Oh, I've got to check that one out." That, that's yeah. quite attractive to me. And even in saying that, that SV88, oh, I love that. I, I only, the only reason why I love that car is I grew up around the corner from one yeah. in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Never seen it since until, I'm not, I'm not saying that was the car, but yeah. Yeah. until that day at Northern Steel. Yeah, and that's why when we do find stuff like that, when we do do the video, we generally like put a big description about the car. Mm. And we try to give as many facts that we can find out about the car yeah. and we also then go back around checks to find out well hang on a minute let's find some specs on this so we can actually put that up as well so people can go have a look for themselves so people can go well nah that didn't happen and you go look at it and they go yeah it did and you show them and then they go wow mm -hmm. wouldn't have guessed it you know mm -hmm. like and it's all very well documented uh, yeah you just slipped through the cracks you know yeah. it was uh, the first hsv ever built well, the amount of people After, that yeah. um, Peter Brock split from Holden, yeah, and went yeah. from HDT stuff to HSV, yeah. and that was the first one they did. So. Yeah. But the amount of people that we had argument, I had arguments with at the car shows because my Sandman was a six. The amount of people that argued with me that Sandman's didn't come out in a six cylinder were adamant that no way they all coming out in V8s, and you showed them the documents, and they just went, "No, nah, you made this up." And it's like, "No, no, they came out," and it's like. 
question yeah. without notice. Does that make the car, do you think that makes the car more valuable? Well, yeah, because most people that had sixes yeah. ripped them out and put the V8s in yeah, So, pretty, yeah, there's sure. very few of them left. It's all yeah. right. So about and XYs and X's. <laughs> yeah. Most of them have been changed into V8s. <laughs> yeah. Or GTs. Yeah. 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 Well, there's more GTs on the road than we yeah. ever yeah. produced. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's yeah, it. yeah, but yeah, no. I think we, when you mentioned that before, you were saying it was a six. I did know that there was that was six cylinders as well. Yeah, but in the back of my head, I said, "Geez, that that that's probably more valuable." Well, apparently yeah. now it's uh, it's got a nice home on a twenty-five million dollar showroom floor, just sitting there, um, and he uses it when he wants to. Yeah, see. Wow. So, um, hey, it's gone to a good home, mm. and yeah, it's yeah. going to get looked after. So I'm happy with that. But that's yeah, that's you. Yeah, you prove my point because I, I I I do. I think there's more value in the ones that got that weren't converted. Yeah. And yeah, it's funny. It's a it's a funny world we live in. But that's uh that's how it rolls. Yeah, yeah. But I actually think it would have had to have been ordered with a six cylinder, wouldn't it? No, no. They come out. They did come out standard, but the dealers had the options of changing them out, okay. and then they put it out. But you could order a, a standard six yeah. as a, a salmon. Um, and yeah, even I think uh, even right up to the um, HZs, the HZs were you had to uh, HZ. I think you had to order the uh, six cylinders. Yeah, okay. But otherwise, up until then, it was that was the you can get them in both. Yeah. yeah. So was that two or two? Yep, two or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we did um, make it a bit more um, beefier. We blueprinted it and we yeah. we made it into like a SU um, um, XU1 yeah. uh, Tirana type setup and the engine bay still numbers matching car but we just boosted it up gave it more performance and let it made it a run and she used to go well yeah. no problem with her at all she used to suck the juice though like every time we went out i had to fill her up so pretty much had to have a fuel tank behind me as i went out <laughs> No, nah, it's look. I mean, that's a magnificent story. I like, I like hearing stuff like that. And oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to dig up. So the phase five, you've got a video. I didn't. I missed that one. Yeah, the, yeah. It's, it's there somewhere. It'll be back mm -hmm. probably yeah. mid last year sometime. Yeah, something like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, we didn't get to do a a, a full interview with the guy because he just didn't want to talk to us at the time. Um, but we got information about it, yeah. and we looked at it, and we we found out some history behind it, and we researched it and put it up there. So yeah. It's hard, eh? Especially when you're at a car show. Like I think, you know, can be not intimidating, but it can be hard going up to someone and saying, "Hey, do you want to talk about your car?" Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. A bit shy. I know, like your friend there was very, very shy. Um, Anthony. Anthony? Yeah, 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 yeah. But in the end, you got you got through to him. You got you managed to speak with him as well. Well, he hates pretty much. It. Yeah, we pretty much make it try to make it relaxed as possible, and we don't really. Make it stiff and starchy. We just... no, our, our unprofessionalism, I think, puts people yeah, at yeah. ease. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, we don't want to be too professional, do we? No, I mean, no. At the end of the day, it's not. We're not talking about yeah. like you know blue chip shares, or you know, we're not talking about you know neuroscience here. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We want no, to. Keep we, it. we just want to talk cars. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Get so, the stories out. And we try. We generally keep it quite raw, don't we? When we're yeah. talking about yeah. stuff, and every now and again, a swear word or something. Yeah falls out well who cares we're talking about a car you know kind of thing but um at the end of the day it's been great for us yeah. and, and most people are receptive we start talking to them and they go oh it wasn't so bad after all i thought it was going to be bad and i went no no he really goes no it's easy talking to you guys yeah. yeah that's what yeah that's that's the key i mean but you're sorry it, it's part of your your charisma i guess as well like, i don't um, have any of that so i don't <laughs> we, no, no, you, you say you don't but you do because at the end of the day because people wouldn't talk to you if you didn't so well, you know what i mean yeah. like here we are where uh, and that we've gone well over an hour and you know you probably didn't think this would go anywhere near that long but that's no, it's no, just no. it's just what happens yeah. you start talking about cars and yeah. you just end up going Oh, when we first started, though, it felt like every interview we did was like it took us like an hour, like to try and get the questions out of it because we had to stop because we kept on forgetting what we were trying to ask them. <laughs> yeah. Now we just do it in one take. Sometimes, yeah, it, just but it's more. natural now for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I can see that when I watch your videos. I can see it's natural. It comes yeah. out of you because you're comfortable with. You got to be also comfortable with cars as well. Like you have to have. This is where I mean I'm not so good because. If it's a Holden, I'm, I'm okay. But like, talk about like the cars that he's into, Evos yeah. and JDM scene. No idea. Mm -hmm. No idea. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. 
So you've got to, like, you know, you, you guys have got to be experts in Chrysler, Ford, Holden, um, and, 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 you know, American cars as well. Well, I think you, you also have to be, you have to listen too, because I think that's Definitely, the key, yeah. because we don't know everything. We make mistakes sometimes too. Like, we put up a couple of cars and someone's corrected us and going, no, nah, that's, that, that's not an XE, that's a bloody XM or really, something yeah, like yeah, that. And we've gone, <laughs> okay, cool, not drama, tell us a bit more. Mm. And we are always been willing to learn a bit more about yeah. it. So when the owners are speaking to us and they're telling us about the car, then we go find out a bit more mm. as well because we go, oh, yeah, I didn't even know that happened. They're like, you know, there's so many cars out there that no one knew existed and, and we're, like, stumbling over cars every time we research another car. Pretty much, yeah. And we're finding all sorts of things that we didn't know. Yeah, like so many rare concept bloody Renaros and concept cars and all sorts of things that yeah. no one knew existed and we're going, okay, well, awesome. Like, where can we find them? Yeah. Being you find them and the beauty about what you guys do is you're recording that, you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're putting it out there, you're recording a history for, for, for people to come along in the future and, and read and, and watch and and learn about so yeah. it is important what what we all do um, because I think you know we're especially with the demise of Ford and Holden really or Holden yeah, in particular yeah. but even Ford now I mean there's no locally produced Fords anymore no it's all it's important now. Yeah, yeah what we're yeah. talking about so it's in you know I think what you do is a magnificent job and uh, I'm really glad you could come come out here for this podcast yeah, yeah. we're happy to you know yeah. like yeah definitely like you said with them, them going, it's um, definitely the big hole in the Australian market with mm. that kind of car because there's nothing to backfill it now. No, you no, know? no and, that's right. um, I think the um, old muscle cars type styling and performances that it seems to be wearing out unless uh, GMH, or sorry, GM brings them all over from the US. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Which I know. yeah, we just need some Camaros and some Hellcats over here now, and then, yeah. you know, uh, that, yeah. that'll go a long way to satisfying the petrol heads. Of, yeah, of yeah, Australia. but then again, it's like when they brought out the Mustang. Now, now the the Mustangs have flooded the market out here now. Yeah. Right now everywhere yeah. you look, there's a Mustang, and you go, well, it's not really rare anymore. It's like driving around with a Doyatsu and everything. Yeah. yeah, they've now got the same. Um, Reputation they've got in America of just being a high car, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah. Guys, where can we find you guys? So, www.aussiegaragetv.com.au. Yep, yep, that's our landing page. And, yep. and um, obviously on YouTube, Aussie Garage, mm -hmm. and yep. Facebook. Yeah, TikTok, uh, Instagram, uh, we're pretty much on all those. Um, we put up posts all the time as much as we can. Um, yep. uh, generally, well, I think. Generally on YouTube we try to put up a video Tuesdays and Thursdays and then in between that we put some up. Wow. But we try to do that, but it's not always the case. During winter we go a bit slower. Um, yeah, it gets a bit quieter. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, that's a good time to get into people's sheds with mm. so yeah, no, We're just trying to meet as many people as we can through the through the car shows that we go to in the meantime. And yeah. yeah. We should have enough people to see through, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. But um, I mean, the only thing I, I suppose we should mention too is we we've actually just signed ourselves a sponsor. Oh, but, well, yeah, we, give them a plug. Yeah, well, Auto Effects WA has uh, come on board to yep. help us. Um, they were impressed by what we did because we did an interview with them, which one of the interviews is going to head up on tomorrow. Actually, right. yep. tomorrow at two o'clock, we're putting the first video of that one up, and we've got another episode to go of that. But we did interview with them about what they do as far as the muscle car and how they protect paint and detailing the cars ready for shows and everything like that. And it was interesting to see them work and what they actually perform and, you know, all the stuff they do behind the scenes. And we did that and out of the blue, we just said, look, I know these guys are small and I know you said you didn't want to do anything until you got bigger, but he goes, oh, I think we should do something now. That's so, excellent news. Yeah. So where can we find them? Well, at Auto Effects, um, their website. Yeah, I don't yeah. have their. I don't know their. Account. That's all right. Yeah, so if they watch, we watch the video tomorrow. We'll be able to find out. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put the links tomorrow. in the video yeah. and stuff like that. So as well. Oh, congratulations, that's good. I like hearing that. Yeah, but, but they're just yeah. another business that's heavily involved in the motor. Uh, mm. Yeah, definitely. In, um, in WA, you know, so cars and coffee, and he's been involved in. He's been in business for twenty years in WA. 
the key is, but he's bought into what your your message and your your product. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean that financially, but I mean also in what you're doing, and you and he can see value in that for him as well. So yeah. that's important. You know, that's important to him, and it's it's great to hear. It's good news. I'm really yeah. happy for you guys. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, guys. Well, look, we'll bring this one to an end. Yeah. Todd, nice. thanks for coming in. That's all right. Yeah. It's a story. Phil, it's great. Dan, it was great to have you here. I really enjoyed this. Thanks, thanks, for, having thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's always uh, nice to talk about cars, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk all night. We yeah. could. We could. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, look, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. So head to AussieGarageTV.com. Dot au head to their Facebook page, TikTok as well, yep. and uh, check out everything. There's so many videos there. That's why, and your website is really good. So yep. you know, yeah. head to the. I reckon best to go to the website. I reckon that's really easy to navigate. Yeah, pretty much you can go from there. From the website, you can go pretty much join any of the yeah. platforms that we've got, and we've even got um, our videos that we put up on YouTube feed straight into our website as well. So they all in there as well. So as yeah. soon as we put one up, it feeds into our web page and the latest one's up on there as well. Yeah, okay. All right. That's great news. Excellent. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you very much. Take care. See, See you. Ya.